the key to keeping your clay soft, not letting it get hard in the first place, is just to keep some moisture in your bag. I like to just keep a wet rag over it pretty much all term long. And this just helps keep it a good soft working consistency. Whenever I'm not actively using my clay, I'm gonna keep this twist tie on pretty tight and keep it wrapped up like this. This is some clay scraps that I've generated from trimming pieces, from carving, from doing some slab building. It's not totally dried out yet, but it's definitely late cheese hard, too stiff to work with. So I'm gonna take this now and rehydrate it. This is actually two different kinds of clay mixed together here. I've been experimenting with using some porcelain and some stoneware. I'm just gonna wedge them both together and I'll get kind of a mix. So what I like to do is take a wet towel and if you don't have a good rag that you can use for this, you could use something like an old t-shirt. And I'm gonna take my stiff scraps wrapped up in a wet towel and then I'm gonna put that back in a plastic bag, maybe even with extra water in there. I like to keep the clay wrapped in this wet towel because that keeps the water surrounded around the clay and not just settle to a puddle in the bottom of the bag. And I'm gonna let that soak overnight and let the water permeate through the clay. And when I open it again tomorrow, it should be a lot softer. This is some clay that I've had wrapped up in a wet towel for a day or two. It's a lot softer than it was before. It's really pretty soft. I'm gonna firm it up and reconstitute it by wedging it. Wedging accomplishes several things. It dries the clay out. It can mix two or more different types of clay together, different colors of clay, different consistencies of clay. It's a blending method. And it also gets the air bubbles out of clay. And that's an important step to take if you're reconstituting clay, say for throwing on the potter's wheel, you wanna have the air bubbles out of it because those air blisters can be like bumps in the clay as it's going around in the wheel. Also, if you're slab building, the pressure from rolling out slabs of clay, if there's air bubbles in the clay, those can blister up to the surface of your slabs. Um, air bubbles that are large can explode when the piece is fired in the kiln and they're just generally not what you want in clay. So that's a main reason why people do wedging. And it will stiffen up the clay also, it'll dry it out a little bit more. I like to start with a piece of clay to wedge. This is a good comfortable size for me. You can wedge clay a lot larger or a lot smaller than this. I like to work on a table that's at about the height of my hips not too high, not too low. This way I can bend over and use the whole weight of my upper body to exert force on the clay. And I just use my whole upper body and lean into the clay. So I put my hands together and I lean in and I push the clay forward and then I roll it back towards my torso. And I push and lean forward and then with my fingers I pick it up and I roll it back towards my torso. Lean forward and roll back. Lean forward and roll back. And you repeat this step about a hundred times. Push forward, roll back towards you. Push it forward away from you, pick it up and roll it back towards you. It's called ram's head wedging because these two spirals on either side can start to look like a spiral ram's horn. So I actually, you might notice, I don't keep my hands right up on top of it like this. Instead, I kind of move them onto the sides a bit to keep it all tight and contained. So I'm actually not pressing straight down. I'm kind of coming in at two 45 degree angles and I'm pushing in and down and in and down and in and down just to keep it contained. 
And usually, if there's still air bubbles in it, you'll be able to see them pretty clearly. There's some air bubbles right there. If you're just pinch forming or working with coils, it's probably fine. And that little teeny air pocket will just work itself out during the firing process, not a big deal. But if you're throwing on the wheel or if you're rolling out slabs, that becomes like a bump in your clay. And it can throw, especially if you're on the wheel, it can throw your piece off center. It can be like a blister on the surface if you're building with slabs. So I'm definitely gonna keep wedging this. Once you get this process down of how to push on it and make the spiral, I say do it a hundred times, but that really won't take very long. I like to work on a piece of kind of bare, raw plywood, something that will absorb some of the moisture from the clay. If you notice that the clay is sticking, it's probably because the spot where you've been wedging has gotten wet. So you can move to a dry spot on your board and that should let the clay kind of roll and it's almost like it bounces back up off the board. You wanna do smaller pumps and just roll it on itself and only do like a little skid forward each time. Don't make big flat spots like that that force you to have to fold it over on itself and actually work more air into the clay, instead just do little pumps. So really the best way to tell if you've wedged it enough is to sit down and start working with it. If you're working on the wheel to go ahead and throw a pot with it, you'll know if there's air bubbles in there. They're pretty unmistakable, these little blisters. Go ahead and try and roll out a slab with it with your rolling pin. And if there's blisters in the surface, then you'll know the next time that you have to wedge more. Um, that's the best way to tell if you're doing it enough is through experience. When you're done throwing with stuff on the wheel and you want to recycle it, it can often be really soft and goopy, which this is. Some of it is kind of like the consistency of jelly almost. It's so soft. So I'm going to spread it out on my plywood board here and as much of it as can come in contact with the plywood, the better because that will absorb the moisture. So I'm going to go ahead and spread this really wet clay out pretty thin on here. I actually have clay of a few different consistencies in here. Some of it is kind of stiff. So I'm just going to manually mix that in with the softer stuff. And if you really want it to firm up quicker, you'll spread it out quite thin. And then I'm gonna poke a bunch of finger divots in it. And that will let more air in there and it'll help to dry it out more quickly. The good thing about doing ceramics at home, like we all are right now, is that you can be constantly checking how this is firming up. I wouldn't necessarily leave this uncovered overnight, but it might benefit, depending on how soft it is, it might benefit from a few hours just left in the open air. It really depends a lot on the weather. So, if we're in the rainy season, it could take a lot longer. It might also depend on where it is you're leaving it. If you're leaving it in a damp basement, then it could take a lot longer and you might be able to leave it uncovered overnight. But in the room I'm working right now, I think it's fairly dry. Also, my wood board is pretty dry. I haven't been using it a lot. If I need some help getting it up off the board because it's so gloppy stuck on there, I'm gonna use the wood rib from my tool kit and do some scraping. And then I can move some of this mass again, maybe over to a more dry spot. This is a little stiffer so I can start to wedge this clay pushing it forward and rolling it back towards me, slightly in and down. I'm keeping my hands on the sides so that I don't get a big long sausage. And once I've got a little bit of a rhythm going, 
I can start to go faster. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and see if I can see any air bubbles. Oh yeah, there's a big air bubble right there. You can recycle and reuse clay as many times as you want. This is exactly like the dirt outside in your yard or in your garden. It dries out and you can add water to it and turn it into mud and dry it out and rehydrate it and get it somewhere right in the middle in that sweet spot where you like to work with it again and again and again. You can just add water, water evaporates and you can add more water to it. And it's sticking again because my board has started to get really wet and saturated. And once your wood board gets really wet and saturated and your clay is really wet, you just need to let everything dry out for a while. If it helps, you could put a small fan on it for about an hour or so. I wouldn't turn the fan on high. Um, it might dry out the clay too much, but you could certainly leave a fan blowing on here on um, low for a while and that will help dry things out a lot faster for you. These are some clay parts that are scraps, parts of pieces and cutoffs of things that I am not going to use anymore that just let get bone dry in this bucket. It's a little easier to recycle your clay if you don't let it get bone dry like this because now this is too dry for me to just wrap in a wet towel and let the water permeate through. Instead, I'm gonna take all this and to recycle it, I'm gonna go ahead and just totally slop it down with water. This is just dirty water in here that I'm pouring in this bucket. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with water and the bone dry clay is going to dissolve in the water. It's going to slake down. This process of dissolving or slaking down may take six to eight hours depending on how thick some of your chunks are. I could maybe break this apart to help the process go a little faster. You want to have enough water in this container to completely cover all of the bone dry clay that you have in the container. Okay, I have been letting this bone dry clay sit in this bucket of water overnight and it is completely slaked down now. There's just a little bit of standing water on the top that I'm going to siphon off before I start to deal with the clay. I'm going to pour off as much of the excess water as I can. You could also use your small sponge from your toolkit to sponge off any excess water that might be floating on the top. Then I'm going to take this clay slop and scoop it out of the bucket onto my plywood board. I'm going to spread it out probably about an inch thick all the way to the edges of the board. This will probably take about 12 to 24 hours of just sitting out until it's the right consistency for me to wedge it up and then I can reuse it. Feel free to use a bunch of plywood boards if you have them so you can spread out a bunch more at a time. You could also set this outside in the sun, especially if it were kind of a breezy, sunny day. That would really speed up the process and you might be able to wedge this up to a usable consistency in just 30 minutes to maybe only a few hours.